Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. As you probably know by now, in this video series I'm demonstrating how you can use your Raspberry Pi as an email server and a web server for free at home. I'm also including how you can develop that website for WordPress in particular and how to deploy it automatically with a continuous integration pipeline. So please do take a look at the playlists on my YouTube channel where I'm organizing my videos into these four sections. If you've been following the video series on hosting an email server through to this video, you'll know from the last video that we're finally approaching the end of our journey. In this video, which is the last configuration video for Postfix and Dovecot, we're going to obtain a certificate from Let's Encrypt via the CertBot utility so that our email server uses encryption with a certificate signed by a registered certificate authority. Okay, so let's head over to my desktop, get that certificate and configure our server to use them. Okay, so here we are on my desktop with my PowerShell waiting to go. I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi as per normal using my SSH alias Pi. I'm now going to clear my screen to be nice and organized. So the first thing we need to do in order to get a certificate from Let's Encrypt is to install the utility CertBot, which will retrieve the certificate for us. If you followed the WordPress series I produced previously, you will already have installed CertBot on your Raspberry Pi. But just in case, do the following in your terminal. sudo whoops, apt, whoops, learn to type, install CertBot, press enter. Yours may take a few minutes if CertBot isn't installed, but as you can see, in my case, CertBot is installed. So I'm now going to clear my screen. The next thing to do is I'm going to tell CertBot to retrieve a certificate only using the following command. sudo CertBot cert only hyphen hyphen stand alone minus d mail dot followed by your domain so in my case single hyphen entity dot com but yours obviously will be different now before you press enter on this command and don't worry if you already have you can use Control c to cancel it and then type it in again or use the up key on the keyboard to get it up again but before you press enter we need to go over to cloudflare and add a record to our dns settings and that's because CertBot will want to validate that our domain actually exists. And though single-entity.com does exist, the subdomain mail doesn't exist, at least not for me. So if you've been following along with this course and done exactly what I've done, you won't have the A record for mail.yourdomain. So we need to make sure it exists. So open a web browser and head over to your Cloudflare DNS settings. In my case, my DNS settings look like this. And yours will probably look the same, except that your domain name will be different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a record using this button, and I'm going to add an A record. And the name for this A record is very simply just mail. This is a subdomain of my domain single-entity.com. Then the IP address is going to be 81.174.156.87, which is my router's public IP address. Yours, of course, will be different. So this needs to match your public IP address of your router, and you'll be able to see what they are already because you've got them written down here. Okay, now the last thing to make sure you've got before you click save is you want to make sure that this is set to DNS only, the proxy status. Basically, you don't want, in this case, Cloudflare to act as a proxy for the mail server. You need it to be just acting as a DNS server. So we just want the DNS capability of Cloudflare in this case. So make sure that DNS only is selected. Make sure our, your IP address is correct and make sure that mail is the only thing in the name record. Click save. And there we go, that's done. So I'll get rid of my window here. Okay, now if what I've just been through with Cloudflare doesn't make a lot of sense and you're wondering what Cloudflare is and what am I talking about with DNS settings? That's because I'm making the assumption that you've been through my WordPress course first, in which I explain Cloudflare and we set up the DNS settings that I've just shown. If you would like a refresher, it's video 16, 
uh, in my WordPress video series. Um, or if you'd like to go through that series in its entirety, it will all make a lot more sense as to why we're using Cloudflare and how it's been set up. Okay. Okay, at this point then I'm going to assume that you've got your A record set up in Cloudflare and it's pointing to your mail subdomain for your domain. So we should now be able to press enter on this command and go through the process of retrieving the certificate from Let's Encrypt. Oh, also I should mention that I will provide a link to video 16 in the description which covers the uh, Cloudflare setup. Uh, though I do advise going through the WordPress video series if you want a fuller picture. Okay, we'll just wait for this to complete. There we go. Congratulations, your certificate has been created. Uh, so, clear my screen. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell Postfix and Dovecot where our certificate and key are located on our system so that uh, both of these services are able to use them. So we'll start by configuring Postfix. I'm going to use nano as usual in my terminal. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash postfix slash main dot cf. So that's the main configuration file for Postfix. We've been in here a few times before. Press enter. On this occasion, we're going to be editing two lines, and these are shown where my cursor is now. There's a line for the certificate file and a line for the key file. These are by default pointing to self-signed certificates, which will work for testing purposes, but aren't suitable for a live email server. So these need to be changed to the paths and the files for our certificate and key uh, that we've just obtained. So I'm going to delete a lot of this line here and go all the way back to the end of the etc forward slash part of the path. And now I'm going to write let's encrypt because that's the folder in which our certificate and key exists. Forward slash live to get the live key or in this case the live certificate and then your domain with your subdomain mail in front of it. So mine is going to be mail.single-entity.com. So in your case it will be mail.yourdomain and then forward slash fullchain.pem. So that's your full chain certificate. Now we're going to do the same thing for the key. So I'm going to take the key file path right back to the etc line and I'm going to type in let's encrypt forward slash live forward slash mail dot and then it will be followed by your domain and in my case that's single hyphen entity dot com forward slash and then priv dot pem sorry my mistake priv key dot pem uh, just to be 100% clear, the extension is pem, not dot .key, as was shown before we changed the path. So, with these two things done, we need to save this file, exit out of this file editor, nano, and now we need to do the same thing as we did for postfix with dovecot. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash dovecot slash conf d slash 10 hyphen ssl dot conf. That is probably a familiar path to you. We've edited this file before. Now, I've edited this already for the sake of time on this video because I'm repeating the same thing. We'll go past the line we edited in a previous video, which says SSL equals required, where we changed it from yes to required, down to these two lines where we've got the SSL certificate and the SSL key uh, paths. And you can see here that I've edited mine to point to the uh, correct location. So you just need to change your certificate and key paths to match the same paths you typed in for your postfix configuration file. You can see on the screen here, this is what they should look like. So you need to just replace 
uh, single-entity.com here and beneath with your domain and you're good to go. Make sure that the uh, arrow here, the left arrow here, uh, is in place. This isn't an accident or a typo. This, These two characters here need to stay where they are. Okay. With that done, we can close this down. So you save it and close it down. And that's it for this video. We've pretty much entirely configured Postfix and Dovecot to act as our email server in a secure way with SASL authentication enabled and encryption. However, there are just a few more lines of configuration we do need to change, and we'll cover that in the next video. But it's only five lines to change. It's very quick and easy. So I'm adding it to the next video where we'll be checking that Start TLS is enabled. And that's very important. It's a critical stage to confirm that Start TLS is enabled because that shows that encryption will be taking place when you send an email. Later on as well in a later video, we will be confirming that by having a look in the email headers to make sure that encryption is set as well. It's very important that you do check that. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you liked it. And if you did, please do like the video. It really helps me to see people are finding it useful. And please do subscribe if you haven't already to my video series. That is by far the best metric I have for people finding my content useful. I also have a Patreon account now if you'd like to contribute to my work. You can uh, find my Patreon site uh, in the description of this video. Uh, I produce videos now for patrons only and I add them to YouTube uh, later on. So if you'd like uh, access to videos before they're available on YouTube, then please do check out my Patreon account as well. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.